today uh, in this webinar of SSWB on uh, pain procedure related to spine, I will speak on uh, pathophysiology and chemical mediators of spine. Though it is an uncharted water for an orthopedic surgeon, I will try to cover the uh, topic on uh, several subheadings like introduction and uh, definite definition of pain, description and classification, pain receptors, uh, pain pathways and relevant uh, neuroanatomy, physiology uh, of pain transmission, chemical mediators and some clinical uh, situation which is relevant. So pain is an elaborate interaction between sensory, behavioral and emotional aspects. Uh, and a unique thing is past experience of pain can dictate an individual's future response regarding pain. That is very important. The word pain came from the Latin word poena, which means uh, it's a penalty or punishment. In the Middle Ages, it is called penalty. Uh, the International Association of Study of Pain, IASP, defines uh, pain in 1996 as a uh, unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage described in terms of such damage. IASP purposefully avoids the uh, pain to the tying pain to the stimulus. So there may not be any stimulus in the pain. Pain is a subjective experience which cannot be easily measured. It requires consciousness. Describing pain as an experience separates pain from nociception, which while nociception is an objective phenomenon, it's a neural process involving the transduction and transmission of the noxious stimulus to the brain via a pain pathway. So pain is result of complex interplay between signaling system, modulation uh, from the higher centers, as well as unique perception of that individual. So uh, same pain cannot be can be different for different individuals. So what is the uh, difference between nociception and pain? Nociception is a neural encoding of impending or actual tissue damage. That means noxious stimulation. Pain refers to uh, a subjective experience of actual or impending harm to the individual. Although nociceptive stimulation usually leads to pain, pharmacological and brain lesion research shows that one can exist without the other. There are different types of pain. Uh, uh, most commonly is a nociceptive pain, which may be superficial or deep, and it can be uh, uh, divided into two types, somatic pain and visceral pain. There are other types like neuropathic pain, referred pain, thalamic pain, psychosomatic pain, as well as the phantom limb pain. First is acute or nociceptic pain. Nociceptic pain re uh, refers to the pain that is associated with the actual or threatened tissue damage and involves the activation of the peripheral uh, nociceptors. It is caused by injury, disease process, abnormal function of muscle or viscera. It may be of two types, somatic or uh, visceral. Now coming to the somatic pain. Somatic nociceptive pain may be sharp or dull aching in nature. It is well localized and uh, consistent with the underlying lesion. Uh, the examples are metastatic bone pain, fracture pain, dental pain, post-surgical pain and uh, arthritic pain, etc. Now coming to the chronic pain, the pain that extends beyond three to six months or the beyond the expected period of healing of the uh, lesion. It may be nociceptive, it may be inflammatory, neuropathic or functional neurology. The psychological mechanism or environmental factors are present in case of chronic pain that is not present in case of acute pain. Now uh, acute versus chronic pain. Acute pain is sudden and it is of short duration while chronic pain is insidious and it may uh, persist after the healing of that lesion. The, there is warning signal uh, or warning sign of actual uh, or potential tissue damage in case of acute pain and it may not be present in case of chronic pain. The acute pain uh, severity correlates with the amount of tissue damage that in case of chronic pain severity may not be related with the tissue damage and there may be psychological aspect in the chronic pain. Uh, CNS involvement also present in the chronic pain. Now visceral pain, that is a unique scenario. Visceral pain, uh, the organs are nociceptions, the, uh, uh, they respond to the mechanical stimulation such as pressure, tissue damage and chemical stimulation. These, these are the viscera, the stomach and uh, intestine and from and the, it is the bladder and from there the afferent uh, neurons, they are coming, uh, going through the autonomous uh, uh, nerves into the, their ganglion and from their ganglion to the uh, dorsal root, uh, maybe autonomic ganglia to the, the sympathetic ganglion, uh, so the to the dorsal root ganglion and where there is interaction between the somatic neuron, the red colored uh, red dotted line is the somatic neuron afferent and there is interneuronal connection between the uh, um, autonomous and somatic neurons and they, they, then the, uh, the uh, proximal nerves go to the uh, uh, dorsal horn of the uh, spinal cord and uh, there is interneuron, there, there is synapse, uh, synapse and there is uh, the second order neuron started from there and go, which goes to the thalamus and through the brain. I'm coming to the, the interaction. Hello. 
now uh, the visceral pain pathway uh, uh, it may goes to the somatic nerve as well as the autonomic nerve uh, uh, just like uh, sympathetic or parasympathetic to the spinal cord and from there to the hypothalamus and brain now difference between somatic and visceral pain somatic pain is well uh, localized while visceral pain is poorly localized somatic pain the density of the receptor is very high in somatic somatic uh, pain situation but on visceral the, so the density of the nociceptor is very low so uh, affected uh, afferent fibers are uh, well represented in cortical mapping in case of somatic pain in visceral pain the uh, ma uh, the uh, it is poorly represented uh, in cortical mapping that is why it is visceral pain is poorly localized adult and c fibers of the uh, sensory fibers that tra travel to, uh, from the somatic for, in, in case of somatic pain through the somatic afferent while adult and c fibers of the uh, visceral pain travel through the autonomic afferent uh, um, autonomic afferent or, uh, autonomic pain may be colicky in nature and is accompanied by autonomic disturbance which is not present in somatic pain and response to pain uh, pinch pin prick cutting uh, crushing etc in case of somatic pain while the visceral pain is the response to distension inflammation and ischemia there are another type of pain called neuropathic pain which may be peripheral which may be central then uh, neuropathic pain is accompanied with some awkward uh, sensations like this feeling burning parasitic uh, uh, it is it may be lancinating pain it may be electric light shooting etc it may be um, paroxysmal it may be continuous there are certain other features of neuropathic pain like allodynia where the painful uh, response to the normally innocuous stimulus so uh, the abnormal uh, hyperalgesia the pain abnormal severity following the noxious stimulus and uh, hyperpathia hyperesthesia dysesthesia etc there are common causes of uh, neuropathic pain like uh, uh, disease process like infection inflammation neurotoxicity tumor infiltration metabolic uh, uh, abnormality therapeutic intervention like surgery like chemotherapy radiation etc trauma like external injury nerve injury nerve compression inflammation etc there are certain common situations of neuropathic pain like post herpetic neuralgia uh, uh, painful diabetic neuropathy low back pain radiculopathy neck pain with radiculopathy spinal cord injury uh, and stroke the nociceptic pain uh, differs from the neuropathic pain no, uh, and i describe it uh, nociceptic pain is well localized while neuropathic pain is not well localized uh, nociceptic pain is sharp uh, and what's with movement N neuropathic pain is burning shooting numbness pins and needle sensation is present mm -hmm. uh, in nociceptic pain obvious tissue injury or illness is present always in neuropathic pain tissue injury may not be present in nociceptive pain injury inflammation and tissue damage causes the nociceptic pain while the nerve injury abnormal firing or abnormal stimulation loss of modulation may cause the neuropathic pain now there is a certain another pain the uh, type of pain called referred pain that is the convergence between uh, somatic pain and visceral pain the uh, see uh, this uh, the visceral afferent fibers from the viscera goes through the sympathetic ganglion and it meets with the uh, somatic afferent fibers from the skin and uh, uh, it passes through the dorsal root ganglion into the uh, dorsal horn and there there is interneuron interneuronal connection so the brain does uh, in incorrect perception and falsely refers to the somatic source even though the stimulation came from the visceral source so the gallbladder pain may be represented to the shoulder the uh, um, pain from the myocardial infarction may be uh, represented to the, to the scapula pain or arm pain uh, uh, now thalamic pain it is called uh, uh, an, another subset of pain it is called desiderine rosy syndrome it is caused by stroke or occlusion of the thalamogenicular artery it is centralized and neuropathic type now south now psychosomatic pain psychosomatic pain is a psychic reaction to pain includes the uh, all well known responses to pain such as anguish anxiety crying depression nausea and excessive muscular excitability uh, it may be associated with post traumatic stress disorder fibromyalgia somatization depression etc this is a unique representation of the uh, psychic pain see there is no injury at the uh, uh, receptor level in the skin and the uh, afferent fibers somatic afferent fibers maybe a delta c they, they may be they are intact and the, up to the dorsal root ganglion also intact and there is uh, there is also uh, um, dorsal horn and it goes to the dorsal horn and goes uh, crosses the uh, uh, spinal uh, spinal level and goes to the thalamus and to the brain but problem is in the descending pathway the descending pathway is not working and it is not inhibiting the ascending pathway that is why ascending pathway the normal stimulation uh, uh, goes to the brain as a excited stimulation and it uh, it represented it is represented as pain painful stimulus now phantom limb pain phantom limb pain is being uh, uh, the pain perceived by the region of the body with no which is no longer present it is the experience of the pain without any signal from the nociceptor it is experienced by the amputees 
there is certain situation in which the neuropathic pain and the nociceptive pain overlaps it is called mixed pain syndrome which has neuropathic characteristic as well as uh, nociceptive characteristics examples are low back pain radiculopathy cervical radiculopathy cancer pain carpal tunnel syndrome etc non nociceptive pain is often dependent upon the central sensitization uh, induced by the prior or ongoing nociception therapeutic methods which minimize the nociceptive afferent activity is important in prevention or elimination of the, this type of pain now coming to the receptors first is i will discuss the nociceptors nociceptors are the free nerve endings of the nerve fibers it is widely distributed in skin dental pulp periosteum and meninges there are two main afferent fibers come uh, generates from the nociceptor they are a delta and c fibers there are three types of nociceptors highly uh, threshold mechanoceptors like htm receptor polymodal nociceptors pmn receptors or silent nociceptors respond to which responds to the stimulation they are activated specifically with pain, painful stimuli heat mechanical or chemical tissue damage now th this is the pathway of uh, uh, pain pathway where the transduction and there are four important steps four four important steps like transduction which happens in the uh, transduction which happens in the uh, tissue injury level at the uh, free nerve ending nociceptor and uh, transmission which is which is which goes through the uh, first order neuron or afferent neuron through the dorsal root ganglion into the uh, dorsal horn and at the dorsal horn there is a synapse and where uh, pain modulation happens and from the synapse second order neuron starts it decussets the uh, spinal level at the uh, and to the opposite side it's, it goes up so um, as a spinothalamic pathway into the reticular activation system and then to the thalamus from thalamus third order neuron there is another synapse and from thalamus a third order neuron starts which goes to the cortex and at cortex the brain perceives this is the perception and according to that perception brain interprets or behavioral changes happen these are the four important steps of uh, pain the neurons neurons are known, known to the primary component of the uh, neural system it connects receives and processes all the nociceptive information there are three types of neurons sensory neuron interneuron and motor neuron it consists of uh, a body called soma action either myelinated or non myelinated this is the action this is the body this is the action and uh, they are dendrites uh, uh, all neurons are electrically excitable now synapse synapse is very important uh, thing and uh, i i uh, compare it with a the river there is uh, the proximal bank of the river uh, the end of the pro first uh, proximal neuron and uh, where there are uh, synaptic vesicles containing the neurotransmitters and with the uh, action potential these neurotransmitter containing vesicles attach with the uh, cell membrane and exocyte by exocytosis uh, uh, the chemicals go into the synaptic cleft uh, as a chemical um, uh, mediator of pain or chemical transmitter and this uh, these neurotransmitter binds with the uh, crosses this river and binds with the opposite bank uh, uh, receptors receptors are the opposite bank and it uh, the chemical phenomenon transmitted into the neutral uh, uh, the electrical phenomenon so electrical phenomenon then chemical phenomenon at the synapse then electrical phenomenon then synaptic transmission synaptic transmission begins with the arrival of the action potential at the presynaptic action which i have already told an action potential at the presynaptic terminal creates membrane depolarization which opens that sodium channels at the terminal this is action potential it may be resting potential or threshold potential the action potential uh, uh, more there how action, action potential is generated there is more uh, sodium accumulated outside the cell than the so, potassium inside the cell so there is negative charge inside the uh, cell which uh, uh, drives the action potential to be generated uh, uh, there are uh, synaptic trans in the synaptic transmission there is one uh, stimulated by two types of potentials are generated uh, two types of potentials are inhibitory post synaptic potential and excitatory post synaptic potential once the triggering threshold is reached the action potential propagated through the action and when action potential travels uh -huh. through the the calcium enters the calcium ion enters into the presynaptic terminal through the voltage gated calcium channel and hence causing the synaptic transmission now this is a step by step representation entry of the sodium uh, ion then further activation of the vocc then calcium enters into the action terminal then fusion of the synaptic vesicles to the presynaptic action membrane action terminal membrane to the neurons and release of neurotransmitter to the cancer into the synaptic cleft which i have already told then uh, free neurotransmitter diffuse across the synaptic cleft binds to uh, to the you make a clone of uh, get protons and um, uh, there is uh, termination now now very important is how the neurotransmitter is transmitted if it is termin not uh, terminated then uh, then second action potential will not be generated so there are four type four, four possible ways drift of the neurotransmitter away from the synaptic cleft removal of the neurotransmitter by the uh, glial cells enzymatic degradation reuptake then transduction of the neuro neurotransmitter 
it happens at the uh, so, uh, at the synapse the signal uh, sequence yeah. is converted to the mechanical event by the receptor then it transports to the neurons and then at synapse there it is again converted into the chemical receptor then uh, pain pathways pain pathways uh, are the primary afferents there may be uh, high threshold mechanical receptors or polymodal uh, receptors uh, and go to the spinal cord and get where the get control happens and uh, through the uh, spinal cord spinothalamic tract and spinoreticular tract goes to the brain and from brain a reverse direction a downwards descending tract which controls the pain mechanism this is the upward uh, uh, pathway from uh, receptors these uh, the dorsal root from the dorsal root ganglion these two fibers go to the um, uh, dorsal horn and then crosses and then goes up to the brain now uh, coming to the chemical mediators there are certain chemical mediators maybe inflammatory mediators and some are non inflammatory mediators which mediates the pain inflammatory mediators are hydrogen ion 5-HT cytokines, prostaglandin, bradykinin, histamine, serotonin, etc. Non-inflammatory mediators are GABA, opioids, glycine, cannabinoids, etc. Now, neurotransmitters may be pain initiators. These are glutamate, substance B, bradykinin, prostaglandin, and pain inhibitors, which inhibits the pain. That is serotonin, encephalins, endorphin, GABA, etc. There are certain groups of the neurochemical uh, mediators, amine groups, uh, noradrenaline and 5-HT, they, uh, they cause uh, increase in pain. Endogenous opioids like encephalin, endorphin, they reduces the pain. Non-opioid peptides are substance P that are associated with inflammation, galanin, etc. Excitatory amino acids like glutamate, they act on NMDA receptors and they uh, act on, as pain memory. And uh, inhibitory uh, amino, acids, like, amino acids like GABA and glycine, the GABA energy drugs act in this area they regulate the behavioral uh, changes others are cannabinoid receptors, receptors. Uh, this is these inhibits the pain you and have saved your time try uh, to conclude uh, as soon, quickly well, yes yes uh, just two minutes hmm. uh, uh, here the paracetamol works then pain mediators may be uh, prostaglandin, bradyclandin, uh, these are the prostaglandin pathway. Then pain mediators may be hydrogen ion, 5-HT and other mediators. Now coming to the receptors. Receptors may be two types, encapsulated nerve ending like this and uh, free nerve ending. Encapsulated nerve ending may be mechanoreceptors, receptors, chemoreceptors or thermoreceptors and free nerve ending may are the nociceptors. There may be specialized nerve ending in the central nervous system. Now first order, there are three order neuron, first order, second order, third order. First order neuron traverses from dorsal horn to spinal cord and uh, its cell body is in the in dorsal root ganglion. I'm uh, rushing through the through my slides. The sensory nerve fibers are two type, four types. One uh, A alpha, A beta, A delta, and C. A alpha is thickly myelinated and fastest, and C is the thinly myelinated, non myelinated, and slowest. Now, uh, the nociception is associated with A delta and C. A delta is myelinated, C is non myelinated, A delta is faster, C is. Uh, 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 slower so this is this picture is very uh, easy to understand the uh, stimulation at the uh, periphery then uh, uh, it goes to the first order neuron into the uh, synaptic cleft in the interneurons and then second order neuron from synaptic cleft at the, uh, the dorsal horn to the brain this is the cross section of the spinal cord dorsal horn of the spinal cord is divided into 10 lamina uh, uh, among the six lamina makes the dorsal horn uh, and it receives all afferent neural activity and uh, these are the six lamina one two three four five six the a delta fiber uh, attached at one and five and three five and this is the uh, uh, synaptic cleft and the, the structure of the dorsal horn may be uh, divided into lamina uh, which i have already told the uh, lamina 2 is uh, caused uh, substantia gelatinosa and a, a beta fibers acts also over there to modulate uh, so there are second order neurons which may be uh, nociceptic specific wide dynamic range and low threshold there are three types of dorsal uh, second order neuron it goes from the dorsal horn to the uh, thalamus and uh, there are uh, gateway uh, gate control theory which is caused by inhibitory control by higher centers activity of a beta fibers and segmental modulation by certain chemicals like endogenous opioids cannabinoid system inhibitory amino acids these are the gate control uh, mechanism uh, c fiber a delta fiber and a beta fiber which uh, cause gateway mechanism and here uh, there is a modulation there are certain uh, neural stimulations so chemical stimulation like gaba 5 ht etc in kefalin they causes uh, they uh, acts on this this side uh, there are uh, now uh, the spinal tract. The si there are two types of spinal tract, like spinal thalamic tract and spinal reticular tract. Spinal thalamic tract may be at lateral and medial. At lateral tract goes to the ventral posterior lamina, uh, lateral nucleus of the thalamus and go to the brain. It uh, controls the sensory discrimination of pain. Medial th uh, uh, tract uh, causes autonomic pain uh, and uh, spinal reticular tract, which uh, controls the diffuse, emotionally disturbing pain. It goes to the thalamus or hypothalamus to the brain. Then third order neuron, which uh, runs from thalamus to the cortex. 
then brain uh, uh, perceives the uh, and uh, perceives the pain in the cortex insula anterior uh, cingulate cortex and prefrontal cortex this is the pictorial representation of the pain pain perception can you conclude now now you are excited 20 minutes now now sorry uh, this is the peripheral and central sensitization now uh, factor separating post surgery pains are different uh, nerve injury tissue injury uh, uh, tissue ischemia inflammation and uh, there is prolonged post post operative pain which inhibits inhibited by anesthesia pain medication psychological support and pain information and there is nerve root injury nerve root injury may be avulsion stretch and rupture uh, and uh, it may be preganglionic or post ganglionic uh, this is a cascade of nerve root injury and there are peripheral sequelae and uh, there are altered distribution altered expression and altered gateway property of sodium channels in case of nerve injury then uh, there is another phenomenon called neuroplasticity happens after nerve injury which causes uh, the neuropathic pain then nerve root compression mechanical or uh, chemical and this is a mechanical effect this, uh, this is the chemical effect it induces the interneural edema and reduces the interneural blood flow histological changes in the nerve root now uh, this is a biochemical effect now la finally the local anesthesia how local anesthetic acts it, it acts by blocking the voltage gated sodium channel which i have already told there are uh, three parts of any any local anesthetic lipophilic part hydrophilic part and intermediate chain and the, it blocks the sodium channel and uh, drives away the calcium uh, ions and uh, the, blocks the development and propagation action of action potential there are two types of uh, local anesthetic like esters and amides uh, is amides are uh, low acting like bupivacaine and ropivacaine and uh, medium acting actin, actions are li lidocaine and this is how local anesthetic act is uh, in the periphery in the peripheral nerve in the nerve root and in the brain uh there's a factor is like affecting there are certain factors affecting local anesthetic action in epidural fat the vasoconstriction local inflammation etc thank you very much mm -hmm.